Well, good afternoon, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Wanted to come in midweek and let you know that I just had my second interview today. But before going any further, I'd like to say one of my main points of being here is Pancake Man. Um, so glad to hear from you. I heard about what was going on down in uh, Alabama, the little, the hurt, the tornado that happened down there. Um, and my mind stayed on you the whole time because I, I didn't hear from you. You didn't respond. Um, so yeah, I was worried about you. Um, thanks for reaching out to me on Twitter to let me know that you're safe and you're okay. That's all that matters to me is that, that you're okay. Um, and to let everyone know that I did do a um, interview, the second interview with the prison system here in, North, in Salisbury, North Carolina, is in the midst of all my change that's going on. Right now I have change going on with the current job that I have. They lost the contract to the nursing home. But out of that, for the past few months, or all those have been following me since July of last year, uh, you know I've had this feeling that I'm not wanted anywhere because I've tried and applied with GEO Reentry Services and didn't, I was turned down three times, went to several other interviews and got nowhere with them, haven't heard anything from them or whatever the reason. And during all that time, I was feeling like, okay, so I'm not wanted anywhere. No one wants me. No one cares about me. And it kind of left me feeling empty a whole lot. Um, but the most amazing thing came out of uh, the company I'm working with currently now losing the contract, which means the April, that sorry, March the 31st is going to be our last day in that building. Uh, then another company comes in and takes over. But uh, the most amazing thing happened out of that. The administrator of that nursing home, who is like, she runs the whole joint, um, called me in her office and she told me, she said, I know that your company is leaving, Travis, and I know that that means that you won't be here anymore. Uh, she says, um, but I'm going to go to my boss, and I don't know how I'm going to keep you here. Even even though your company's leaving, somehow i got to keep you here in this building. She said, because every time I see you, I smile. Um, she said, um, I've asked all the managers here and all the department heads how they thought, what they thought about you. And she said, I have not met no one yet who does not love you. All of them love you here, and we all want you here because you're part of our family. Um, she says, so whatever I have to do to keep you in this building, I'm going to do it. And true to her word, the next day she called me in to her office, and she told me. She said, um, I called my boss last night, and I spoke with him. And there's two different positions here that I want to, I want you to apply for because I'm going to keep you in the building. We love you, Travis. Um, we don't want to go on without you. She said, you complete our family, you complete our team. Um, that made me feel so wonderful because I've always felt and I felt for a long time that, you know, that I wasn't wanted anywhere and not knowing that she would feel that way. And I realized that everything, that I wasn't alone in my thinking that everything, every time I talked to God about not feeling like I belonged anywhere or that anyone wanted me, it was through her and it was through that nursing home that I would get confirmation that I am wanted somewhere. I cried. Um, I mean something. And she let me know that. Um, it meant everything to me. So with the company leaving and everything, um, I mean, she told me, she said, you need to put in your resignation with the company you're, prior, you're, you're currently with. She said, because uh, once you come to work here, she said, then you'll be our employer of hours then. Um, so I'm in the midst of that change in the company leaving, um, and having to put in a notice with that company, terminate my employment there. So either I'll be working either at, um, at, at the nursing home or I'll be working at the prison. So the interview at the prison went very, very well today. I could not, I, it couldn't have went better. Uh, Believe it, to say something about that that position there at the prison was, ironically, that interview I went to at that prison, I started not to go to that interview because I felt, they asked me in the email when they was setting up the interview, they asked me to bring a copy of my official transcript from the school. Well, I owe $1,500 for a class when I was getting my master's degree, and until I can pay off that class, 
then um, I won't be able to get a copy of my official transcript. I figured out a way that I'll be able to get it and pray to God that it works. But I didn't, I thought that, you know, because they were asking me for an official copy of it and I don't have a, I can't get a copy of it until I start paying on that class, which I intend to do. Um, I didn't think I was gonna, I, I was like, okay, so maybe I shouldn't go to this interview because they're gonna ask me for that. I don't have a copy to give to them or to show to them. Um, so I said, well, maybe I shouldn't even go because I'll be wasting their time and my time. But something kept pressing me to go anyway. So I ended up going to that interview uh, and said to myself, what comes of it, comes of it. And then the same week, of course, I think I told everyone that I would be going to another interview at another prison, which I felt like I was going to get that one. Well, that one, I thought that was a, uh, that interview was smashing. It went very well. Only problem is I haven't heard from them. Um, but the one that I did not think I was going to even qualify for, that I was going to get, was going to give me a hard time, it was the very one that, uh, asked, that called me for a second interview. So I went to the second interview today, and I kept thinking to myself that, you know, they wouldn't call you back for a second interview if you, they didn't like you in the first one or if they didn't feel a certain way about you in the first one. And honestly, the first interview, I thought I bombed it after, I thought I, I messed it up because they asked a question in there um, that I had no idea what they were talking about. And when they asked me the question, I was very upfront with them and I was honest and told them I have no idea what that question means. I'm not even going to try to answer it. Um, and I just looked at the question in the face and I said, hey, it just looked like they was like, okay, so we're not even going to go any further. But after I left that interview, within a couple of days, I get an email asking for a second interview. And they told me that within, after today, that they told me that it was going to be, the process is two hours within two weeks, they're trying to get the position filled. Within two weeks, they'd be reaching out to the candidate that they chose for that position. Um, the one thing that people need should understand about working for the state, uh, having a state job, is they will not give you any kind of clues as to like the facial uh, uh, when you read people's faces and see, kind of gauge where they're going or whether or not they like you, whether or not you know how they feel about you, if you ever pay attention to people's uh, reactions to you and to your reactions to your response, which I do a lot. I'm very behavioral, so it means I, I pay attention to people's behavior. So I, I try to get a lot of clues from uh, people's facial features, their body language, their gestures, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of leads me into some kind of way of what they're thinking. Or do I have a chance with this? Do I not? Or what are they, they probably looking at me like I'm dumb? Or but somehow I, I, I read through the I can read through their body language, you know. Um, so I thought I could anyway. Um, and I, I say that because in the last interview it was a very great interview. At the one that I thought I was going to probably get um, that I hear from by now, I thought that was a very great interview. There was great rapport. We laughed. We talked about different stuff. Uh, there was four people. They nodded and they looked at me with the looks of like approval of my answers, um, thought I was straightforward, but I haven't heard from them. But the one that, again, to get back on topic, the one that I did not think that I did so good in, and they did not give me any kind of uh, uh, facial features to let me know, that, okay, you know what, I think he may be the one. Or, well, you know, okay, so let's call him back for a second interview. They didn't give me anything like that. So anytime you apply for a job with the state anywhere, they have what they call a resting bitch face or they have a stone face, which is basically, um, to me, I call it a correction, a correction face because people that works in correction, they can, they have to be careful of how they interact around inmates because inmates play different games and stuff and they try to, they try to bait you. So then they, nine times out of 10, when you go and work into, into the work of corrections, you're going to find a lot of them that look like they're just, they're, just, they, they're very, uh, blank. Um, so when they're asking me questions, it's like I mean, I'm sitting there giving these answers, and you look for a facial expression, and they just look at you and say, "Okay, next question." Um, and so you answer that question, and you kind of look for a sign of how they felt about your response. But they look at you and say, "Okay, thank you. Next question." And at the end of the interview, they look at you, "Thanks for coming in, and we'll be getting back with the candidates within the next two weeks." And that was it, point blank. Um, but. I, I feel like I do have 
this posi position, I'm going to shout and I'm going to praise God uh, uh, in advance for it, believing and knowing that it is mine, it's going to be mine. Um, I'm excited. So I have a lot of changes going on and I wanted to also reach out to all of you to say hello and thank you for being there. Thank you for all those who are still watching the video, who's still following me and still supporting me. Uh, I love each and every one of you. Um, and I will try to get back within the next week and do another video um, just to let everybody know how I'm doing and see how you all are doing. With that being said, I'm going to jump off, off of here and I will talk to you all later. Oh, by the way, um, for all those that lasted to the end of the video, um, I'm going to see if everybody would actually look, looked at the video all the way to the end. Uh, March the 18th, which is Monday, I will be turning, I'm not going to tell you how old I'll be, but it'll be my birthday and I want to say thank you uh, to all of you in advance for you all are my birthday presents, you're my birthday gifts for being there and supporting me. Um, so thank you very much and, and uh, happy support me birthday to all of you and thank you and uh, I love you all and in advance. Yes, it's my birthday and I'll be thanking my each and every one of you. So we'll talk to you later. Y'all have a good day.